the NSA's largest overseas spying base, Menwith Hill. Based in North Yorkshire, England, the NSA spy base RAF Menwith Hill is the largest overseas spying base for the National Security Agency, NSA, and the National Reconnaissance Office, NRO. And it is the largest signals collection station among the Five Eyes. In a previous Global Network video, we discussed the origins of the Five Eyes and how military satellites spy on you. Now, NSA historian James Bamford states in Foreign Policy, Like a moon base hidden in the rolling Yorkshire hills, the station's 33 giant golf ball-like radomes house parabolic antennas capable of 2 million intercepts an hour from communication satellites. To better analyze data at the post in 2012, the NSA added powerful supercomputers and boosted personnel from 1,800 to 2,500. This quote is from a while ago. Menwith Hill now has 34 ray domes and is constructing even more. For many years, researchers and journalists have speculated about the operations on the base, while anti-war and peace organizations have campaigned for more transparency about its activities. But top-secret documents leaked in 2016 offer an unprecedented glimpse behind the razor wire fences surrounding the secret base. These files reveal how the NSA uses Men With Hill to carry out, quote, a significant number of capture kill operations across the Middle East and North Africa, fueled by powerful eavesdropping technology, which harvests data from more than 300 million emails and phone calls in a single day. The documents also revealed how the NSA has pioneered groundbreaking spying programs used at Menwith Hill to pinpoint locations of their targets, accessing the internet in remote parts of the world. Programs like Ghost Hunter and Ghost Wolf are used in military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan, but also used in countries where the U.S. hasn't declared a war. The disclosures raise new questions about the extent of British complicity in U.S. drone strikes and surveillance, which have violated international laws and constituted war crimes. What did you just say it was? No, it's th a load of what? A load of tosh. <laughs> no, what a load of bollocks! It, it, it's you know the arrogance of it. This is a, this is a public right of way. This is outside of their domain, allegedly. Yeah, it, you know, here they are taking these signs up. You're from, where are you from? I'm from Ox Oxford, or Oxford, as you Americans say. Yeah. So what do you think of these little three dots behind you? In the not, American... not impressed at all. Not you know, impressed. Yanks go home. Yeah, not you, nothing personal, but oh. you know, that's, that, that was the slogan anyway in the old days. Yeah. 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 Does this, does this you know, base disturb average life here? Well, a lot of people, I think a lot of local people don't even know what its real purpose is. It's a pretty sinister place, I think. I mean, it's, it's, it's drone, it's connected to the drone program. There's geeks in here, press buttons and kill people thousands of miles away. It's a listening post, it's, you know, it's just like GCH curious intelligence gathering. A bit of everything, it's very deeply sinister, yeah. Most of the world's international phone calls, internet traffic, emails, and other communications travel through undersea cables that connect countries and continents like giant arteries. The NSA and other military and intelligence agencies tap into these cables to monitor and surveil the world's data flowing through them. The UK's capacity to tap into these cables and the communications that travel through the air with satellites in space has made the Government Communications Headquarters, or GCHQ, an intelligence powerhouse. In 2010, the GCHQ boasted that it had the biggest internet access of any member of the Five Eyes. The base covers roughly one square mile and is patrolled 24 hours a day by armed British Ministry of Defense police monitored by cameras on every section of the 10-foot perimeter fence. But even the British police question why they patrol the base on the outside because the U.S. military has its own police who patrol the base from the inside. So what's your role in here, the MOD? You will be. Our role is, a, is, is basically an external patrol. 
Oh, external. Okay. You're, oh, you're, you're, not, you're not based in, in there yourself. Um, we're based. Well, we're really? based yeah. within yeah. The, the, the actual like base. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> but our actual <laughs> jurisdiction is to oh, control, control the exterior. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Still the same. Why not the inside as well? You can do if you want to. Yeah. So what's the point when there's American American forces actually patrolling armed within the base? Well, it just seems to be They're doubling up. Well, you're doubling up. There's no point. Jobs. Yeah, we're very near. Jobs, I guess. In 1954, the British War Office purchased the land in which the base sits and handed it over to the U.S. Department of Defense. It was originally named Field Station 8613. The U.S. Army Security Agency began construction in 1956 and then renamed the base the 13th USASA Field Station. Then, in 1957, renamed it again to Menwith Hill Station. After several years of being used by various U.S. military branches, the base was officially handed over to the NSA in 1966. Due to advancements in digital technology and America's growing influence around the world, the NSA expanded the base. In 1996, the base was then renamed again to RAF Menwith Hill. Now, a confusing aspect surrounding the base is in the name. Officially titled RAF Menwith Hill, RAF stands for Royal Air Force. Many bases in the UK are prefaced with the RAF acronym. This acronym gives the appearance of the base being solely a UK base, but RAF Menwith Hill, along with many others, are mainly controlled and operated by the National Security Agency of the United States of America. This has been a common tactic between NATO and allied nations, helping to cover the involvement of a foreign government on a nation's territory. But to clear the confusion, the British Ministry of Defense owns the land, but has handed over all operations to the U.S. under the 1951 NATO Status of Forces Agreement and other classified arrangements. The Ministry of Defense says it retains control over the site's use and facilities. However, the administration of the site is the responsibility of the U.S. authorities. So Menwith Hill began as a site to act as a, quote, communication intercept and intelligence support service to the U.K. and U.S. But as technology advanced, the base expanded its activities. After the tragic events of 9-11, the base became an even more integral part of the global surveillance state. And in 2012, the operations at Menwith Hill expanded even more under Project Phoenix, described as one of the largest and most sophisticated high-technology programs carried out anywhere in the UK over the last 10 years. A study published by the Yorkshire Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, or CND, says that the work on the base has been reserved mainly for U.S.-based arms corporations, including Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, and their personnel with high-level security clearance, and that the base was being expanded to provide qualitatively new capabilities for intelligence-led warfare. The very next year, NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden exposed the entire spying system to the world. Within those leaked documents by Snowden, it stated that Menwith Hill has two main spying capabilities. The first is called Fornsat, which uses powerful antennae hidden under those giant golf ball-like domes to eavesdrop on communications as they are beamed between foreign satellites. The second is called Overhead, which uses U.S. government satellites orbiting above targeted countries to locate and monitor wireless communications on the ground below, such as cell phone calls and even Wi-Fi traffic. A quick history lesson before moving forward. In the late 1980s, international communication networks were revolutionized by new fiber optic undersea cables. The technology was cheaper and satellites could transmit data across the world much faster than ever before, at almost the speed of light. Because of this, the NSA and other intelligence agencies, as well as multinational corporations, were convinced that the satellite communications would become obsolete and be replaced fully by the undersea fiber optic cables. Today, that prediction has proved to be incorrect as millions of phone calls and other communications 
are still traveling to satellites in outer space, which the NSA has readily exploited at Menwith Hill. In a document from 2006, the NSA said that, quote, commercial satellite communication traffic is largely unencrypted, obviously making it much easier to monitor. And this has been a main aspect of Menwith Hill. NSA documents have also said that in a single 12-hour period back in 2011, its surveillance systems logged more than 335 million metadata records, which reveal information such as the sender and the recipient of an email, and the phone number someone called, and at what time. Okay, back to the top secret documents leaked in 2016. The U.S. and U.K. governments have actively misled the public for years through a cover story. The documents show that the authorities at Menwith Hill cautioned their employees against revealing the truth of its activities. It stated, quote, It is important to know the established cover story for Menwith Hill and to protect the fact that Menwith Hill is an intelligence collection facility and reference to satellites being operated or any connection to intelligence gathering is strictly prohibitive. But why is the U.S. collecting so much information? In 2008, the then NSA director, Keith Alexander, set a challenge. Why can't we collect all the signals all the time? Sounds like a good summer homework project for men with. As a result of this challenge, the new collection posture was introduced not only at this base, but as an integral part of the global surveillance system. It aims to collect it all, process it all, exploit it all. For many years, the global network has supported local organizations who have demonstrated outside of Men With Hill to expose the secretive operations which have proven to be illegal according to international law, many of them straight out war crimes. One of these organizations is the Campaign for Accountability of American Bases, which evolved in 1992 out of the long campaign of protests at the American base. Local residents have expressed their concerns since the arrival of the U.S. Army at Menwith Hill in 1951. The Campaign for Accountability of American Bases has continued to build on the work and struggles of many people over the years. The Global Network continues to work with organizations from all around the world, highlighting issues around and exposing dangerous and provocative operations by the U.S. military and government. Join us today as we continue to build a truly global network of organizations against the greatest purveyor of violence in the world. Africa's Libyan shores. The